Welcome to Hansa Hochschule, University of Applied Sciences, Groningen, the qualitative research courses. This course is a follow-up of my theory lectures in the university. And today, I'm going to present an example about qualitative research. It comes from one of my previously supervised master students. This is not a perfect qualitative research example, but this is very representative of our students' research. So I think we can learn from it what kind of benefits it has and what kind of pitfalls it has also experienced. And this is the thing we can avoid in our own qualitative research. So the case is about a Dutch uh, transport company. I use the company X to represent that. The research question of the students is, how does the management team of company X value the internal knowledge sharing? And this student has interviewed three person. Interviewee one is a female, Miss A. She is a board member of the company in the Netherlands. This is a semi-structured interview. And during the interview, the students has covered the following topics, top level strategy, uh, knowledge sharing benefits, the needs, the strategies, the topics, and what is the comments on UITP. UITP is the internal network of this company. And interviewee B is a male, and he is the direct member of the company X in the Netherlands. And again, this is a semi-structured interview, and uh, the topics are almost the same as the interviewee 1. And the same topic also go to interview you three. And she is a project manager in the Public Transport Authority faculty. And again, this is a semi-structured interview. As I mentioned in the theoretical lecture, semi-structured interview means the student has prepared predetermined questions. And during the three interviews, the student has asked around 15 questions. But unfortunately, the students presented very little information about these interviewees. For example, what is the age of these interviewees? And what, is the, what are the uh, working experience of that? Suppose we know that the board member is quite new and has just transferred to this company from another company, while the project manager is a senior manager and she has a rich working experience in this field. And then when we interpret the interview results, we may have different understanding of that. And besides, the student has ignored the, the detailed uh, description of the interview process. For example, where did the interview take place? In their company? Or they are invited to some coffee room by the uh, students? or um, the interview is conducted face-to-face -face or uh, via Skype. And the student also didn't mention the interview it has been uh, videotaped or audio taped, whether she has asked agreement from the interviewees. And besides, she also has missed what kind of extra occurrence may happen during the interview. These are all the things she has missed. That influence uh, our interpretation of the interview results. Okay, I just said that this is not a perfect uh, interview research. I just pick it up as an example. Now let's go to the details. First, we look into the transcripts of interview E1. I intentionally pick up the first three questions because the students have actually uh, asked 15 questions. It is very time-consuming for, for us to go through every question. So I only focus on the first one um, of the first interviewee. Yeah? And then the rest, I will uh, present how we can interpret it. So the first question is how beneficial knowledge sharing is within the company. And the interviewee once said it is very important, and especially in certain areas where we have similar markets what maturity is concerned, like Denmark and Sweden. Then you can learn a lot from each other and use best practices. This is the student's transcripts. 
and both the interviewee and our interviewer students are not English native speakers, so there contains uh, uh, some uh, grammar mistakes, but that doesn't influence our understanding of this interview transcripts. And now I use different color to highlight it. And first, it is very important. This is the first information we get from this uh, interview. And interviewee one is the board member of the company. She has also mentioned that it is important, especially when the maturity uh, similar markets are concerned. And the reason why it is important is they can learn a lot from each other because they are similar and they can apply the best practices. So let's look at that, how we can code it. This is our first part. And we can code it as importance and similar markets and mutual learning. This is the thing we get from this first paragraph. And the second one is very brief. And let's go to directly to the third question. How is knowledge sharing working among those countries? The interviewee said, we did several attempts. We more or less failed. So this is their experience. And this experience is failure. And it had to do it because we did it in a too big scale. So large scale is one of the reasons why they failed. For example, knowledge sharing between Portugal and Sweden doesn't have a, should be have a lot of sense. Because the market is totally different. The people are totally different and the companies are totally different in what IT is concerned. So because it's too large, the scale is too large, and the markets are quite dissimilar and not similar. So I don't see a lot of additional values in that case. This is what we can code from that. So this is what we say coding. Now let's go on with it. After that, you see, I got something like themes. The first is important, is the themes. And importance, especially in similar market, because they can uh, have mutual learning. So the relationship is especially when and because, the causal relationship. And another theme is they have the failure. And the failure is one of the reasons is the scale is too large. The second is the markets are quite different. So these are the two reasons result into this failure. So the relationship between these two and the failure is these are the reasons and this is the result. So we have got two themes, importance and failure, from this short transcripts. Okay, now we can uh, look into the second interviewee. And he is the director of this company. And this time I only look at, I only focus on the first question as an example. He said... I think we can get a lot of benefits out of that. I think there is room for improvement to share knowledge within the Company X group and to use that knowledge in the right way, uh, for instance, the UITP. Still, each country has a focus on each country, but there are a lot of developments in every country which are more or less the same. It would be very useful if we find a way to share knowledge more between the countries also. Okay, these are the information we get from company uh, from interview E2, the director of the company. Let's look at interview E3. And she is the project manager. I think it is beneficial, but it needs to be done in a smarter and coherent way. I think there are some areas where you can learn a lot from each other. However, each country is very autonomous. I think it is normal that initiatives and wishes to share should come from the countries. So they should be made owners of the process of knowledge sharing. However, I do feel that would never happen unless someone is centrally responsible for the coordination. And again, that can be done differently. So on some areas, I think it is better if only the North talks to themselves and the South talks to between themselves because they obviously are more alike and is more efficient. 
But I do think it is really important that from time to time there is a whole sharing between all countries. Okay. How can we interpret these three interviewees' responses to the first question together? Now I put all of their responses to the first question horizontally. I present it as this in this way, and again I use the color to highlight the information. And this time I use the red to show that the first interviewee think it is very important the、uh, knowledge sharing, and the interviewee two think. And、we can get a lot of benefits. So again, very positive feedback. And interview three、uh, mentioned beneficial, and again, really important. So all of them have very positive feedback on this knowledge sharing. And interview E one, as I just mentioned, she has mentioned、um, it is very important, especially when it's similar markets, yeah, and very mature markets. And they can learn from each other, and interview you too. Use the similar comments he has mentioned when they are more or less the same. So again, this is about similar markets, and interview you three also mentioned that the north talk to themselves and the south talks to between themselves because they are obviously um, um more alike. So this is again one two three that three interview you think. It is especially important when the markets are similar. And interview E three at、um, agreed with interview E one. When it's similar, they can learn a lot from each other. So it's mutual learning. And interview E two and interview E three also has some, mentioned something about improvement. Interview E two mentioned that there is a room for improvement. And he proposed the example, the UITP, and interview three mentioned that it can be improved in a smarter and coherent way. And each country is anonymous, so initiatives and wishes should be shared、uh, should should or- originate from the countries, and the countries should be the owners of the process of knowledge sharing. So. In this case, interview two and three all mention something about improvement, but this is the thing interview one didn't mention. Okay, now if in this case we clean the data, and what we can get is like that. And if we organize the data as a matrix, and what we can get is a table like this. And again, don't forget you need to. Always relate what you have interpreted from the transcripts back to the interviewee themselves. As I mentioned in the theory lesson, that interview research, the qualitative research, is a very subjective research method. So all the interpretation should be always related to the interviewees, their gender, their work experience,、uh, their backgrounds, their education level, or their personal relationship with this topic. Okay, now let's look at this matrix, and we can find very important benefits, useful, beneficial, really important. These are all the general comments that these three interviewees have arrived, and about what kind of benefits and how it is beneficial. And first interviewee mentioned Denmark, Sweden as an example、uh, for similar markets, and this this is in line with the second one, more or less the same. And the third、uh, project manager mentioned the sales talk to themselves, and they are very alike. And why it is important? Interview E one and interview E three all mentioned mutual learning. They can learn from each other. They can talk to themselves. Use the best practices. And about improvement, interview E two and three mentioned.、Um, interview E two mentioned UITP. It's very specific case, while interview E three mentioned several ways, like、uh, the initiatives and which originate from the country. The country should、uh, own the ownership of the knowledge sharing process. If we、uh, do like that, put them all in a matrix and in a table, and then we can get more coordinated information from these interview transcripts. 
Now, if I wanted to write it in my report, I can write it like that. Okay, boys and girls, this is just an example. This is not a perfect interpretation of that. So if you are going to write your own research reports, you should always use your own understanding to interpret it. This is not a standardized answer for that, just an example. Okay, I can write like, overall, the management team recognized the importance of knowledge sharing and highlighted its significance in similar markets. One important reason is that branches can learn a lot from each other by sharing the best practices. Regarding the similarity, the managers indicated the geographical likeness, such as Denmark and Sweden. However, from the operational perspective, there exists a room for improvement. Ms. C has the project manager pointed out that initiatives and wishes should come from the countries. Currently, the general branch of the company plays the role as a coordinator. Instead, it is suggested to give authority to the branches of each country and let them manage the knowledge sharing process. So these are the information I can get from the first question. And I can also use a network to visualize it. First topic is the important, and we know all the three agreed on it. And it is especially for the similar markets, it is very important. And Mr. B and Miss A both agree on it, and Miss A is uh, intentionally mentioned the maturity of the markets, while Miss C mentioned the geographical likeness of the markets. And both Mr. B and Miss C mentioned things about improvement, and Mr. B uh, proposed a specific case UITP, while Miss C. Uh, gives the point about the country should have the ownership. Besides this kind of visualization, I can also use my imagination to visualize it like this. The importance goes to the application in sim similar markets, and it concerns the maturity of the markets or geographical um, location of the markets, about improvement, it concerns UITP and also the country should have the ownership. So from this visualization, I can get the information from the first interview uh, question very clearly. But again, as I mentioned at the beginning of these videos, this is just an example of my previous students. It is not a perfect interview research. And the limitation of this research is the student didn't conduct triangulation check. For example, there is no member check of the interviews. When you have finished your interview, you should have write down your transcripts or the summary of your interview and send it back to the interviewees and ask for their agreement whether all the things you have interpreted or you have recorded is in accordance with their opinions. But this current student has ignored this check. And again, there is no detailed information about interviewees and also uh, their uh, interview process. All these kind of things influence the validity of the findings. So I wish that in your interview research, you can avoid this kind of problems. Thanks for your listening.